In this video, we're gonna continue our discussion of binomial distributions with a few worked examples. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here is our question. A Gallup poll showed that 30% of students are satisfied with the way things are going at their university. Suppose a sample of 20 students is selected as part of the study of the state of universities. For the sample of 20 students, compute the expected number of students who are satisfied with the way things are going at their university. Okay, well, we can do that. So A, we're asked to calculate the expected number. So let's think about expected value. So our expected value is equal to N times P, right? We're dealing with a binomial distribution. They're either satisfied with the way things are going or they are not. This is a yes or no type of question. So we should automatically be thinking binomial distribution. So our sample size or our number of trials is equal to 20 times our probability of success, which is 0.3. We get our probability of success of 0.3 because we're told that 30% of students are satisfied with the way things are going. So we get N times P, which is 20 times 0.3. So our expected number of students in a sample of 20 who are satisfied with the way things are going is equal to six students. Okay, that's A. For B, for a sample of 20 students, compute the variance and standard deviation of the number of students who are satisfied with the way things are going at their university. Okay, so let's start with variance. So our variance of X is equal to N times P times one minus P which is also equal to n times p times q. So this is equal to 20 times 0 0.3. q is equal to 1 minus p. 1 minus p is equal to q. So 1 minus 0 0.3 is equal to q. Therefore, 0 0.7 is equal to q. So 0 0.7. So 20 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 gives us 4.2. That is our variance. Our standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So our standard deviation of x is equal to the square root of n times p times q, which is also equal to the square root of the variance of x. So this is equal to the square root of 4.2. which gives us a value of 2.0494. Okay, so just like that, we've completed our answers to A and B. So then we're asked to compute in C, we're asked to compute the probability that exactly four of the 20 students surveyed are satisfied with the way things are going at their university. So C, the probability that x is equal to 4 is equal to n factorial divided by x factorial times n minus x factorial times the probability of success to the power of our number of successes times our probability of failures to the power of n minus x. So we have 20 trials. Our variable of interest is x is equal to 4. times our probability of success, which is equal to 0 0.3, to the power of our number of successes, which is four, times Q, which is 0 0.7, to the power of 20 minus four. So what do we get? We get 20 factorial divided by four factorial times 16 factorial times 0 0.3 to the power of four times 0 0.7 to the power of 16. So we get 20 factorial divided by four factorial times 16 factorial. We get 4,845 times 0 0.3 to the power of four, which is 0 0.0081 times 0 0.7 to the power of 16 
which is equal to 0 0.003323. So we take that and we take these products and we take these values and, some, and multiply them together. So 0 0.003323 times 0 0.0081 times 400. 4,845 is equal to 0 0.1304. So the probability that exactly four students are satisfied with the way things are going at their university in a sample of 20 is equal to 0 0.1304. And then finally, we're asked to compute the probability that at least two of the students surveyed are satisfied with the way things are going at their university. So another way of thinking that of that is we're being asked the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. So to do that, we first have to solve for the probability that x is equal to 1. So we get 20 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 20 minus 1 factorial times 0 0.3 to the power of 1 times 0 0.7 to the power of 19. So 20 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 19 factorial gives us 20 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 to the power of 19 gives us this value here, 0 0.0011399. So we can do this times 0 0.3 times 20 gives us a value here of 0 0.006839. So that's the probability that x is equal to 1. We also need to calculate the probability that x is equal to none or 0. So we'll just do this here. The probability that x is equal to 0 is equal to 20 factorial, 0 factorial times 20 minus 0 factorial times 0 0.3 to the power of 0 times 0 0.7 to the power of 20. So 20 divided. 20 factorial divided by 0 factorial times 20 factorial. That's just going to equal to 1 times 0 0.3 to the power of 0. Well, that is also equal to 1. So 0 0.7 to the power of 20 gives us a value here of 0 0.0007979. Well, 0 0.00007979 times 1 times 1 is just equal to 0 0.00. 0.7979. Seven, okay, so now that we've done that, effectively what we can do is we can find the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. And this is just going to be the probability that x is equal to 0 plus the probability that x is equal to 1. So we've done this, so we get 0 0.00683. Well, let me just do this in the right order so nobody gets confused. So the probability that x is equal to 0 is equal to 0 0.0007979. That's as calculated right here. Plus the probability that x is equal to 1, which is what we've calculated right here, to be 0 0.006839. So we add those values together. And we get 0 0.007637. So that's our probability that x is less than or equal to 1. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, which is equal to 1 minus 0 0.0076. Three, seven. So 1 minus 0 
one minus zero point zero zero seven six is equal to zero point nine nine two three six. There we have it. <clears throat> we have completed all of the answers to this question. Um, and that's it for this video. That's it for this video. But if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.